Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Now today I wanted to show you how to make your own DIY smoke tester. Now we've already done the 3D printed boost tester, but smoke is a lot better for seeing rather than hearing where your boost leaks may be. So we'll do a little bit of a breakdown of how this is built. Now I've already built it to test it and tried to work out what parts you can use, what you can ravage out of your kitchen and your, your shed and whatever. Um, but all you're basically gonna need is a tire pump. Now I've got an electric one just to make my life easier. Um, and I'll go through all the components, but basically once you've got it plugged in, you've got your soldering iron hot, so your, your smoke is being emitted, you literally simply just, and out it comes. And I don't know how you can see that, but plenty of smoke. Now, before we get stuck into it, I'll just go through some of the safety tips. Now this is using a soldering iron, you're gonna need to use a drill, um, some cutters and some other bits. So if you are not supervised, make sure you are supervised to do so. <laughs> um, but no, it's very simple. Um, tire pump wise, obviously you can use whatever you want, a hand pump, foot pump, bike pump, that doesn't matter. Um, tubing wise, I've just used some eight mil hose um, just because I had some silicon hosing from the garage. Um, and this is broken down with just a few bits. I mean, it looks a bit crass. I've still left the uh, cucumber spears with dill um, on the uh, the jar. But basically you wanna get, get yourself a big jar. Um, I'll break down the components. Ugh. Now, you can use one of whatever you want. There's loads of different options of what you can use. But you basically wanna get yourself a big jar because you're gonna to wanna to be drilling three holes. And ideally you want it long enough that you're gonna be able to get a soldering iron in without it bottoming out. Now, um, what you're gonna be doing is drilling a big hole in the center, big enough that the um, soldering iron will go through and then can be glued using a, a two-part two epoxy uh, onto the lid. And that is then that won't go anywhere, then that will stay there. So that's on the lid there, look. Um, and once epoxied in, then you're gonna drill two separate holes. Now you can do one of a million things. You can use, um, I've used, bent tire valves off a motorcycle, which I got off Amazon for four quid. Um, you could just use straight through pieces of plastic tube, whatever it is you wanna use. I use these because then I could have a valve on one side and then an open on the other, so I've taken the valve out of the center of one side. So then that always allows you to put air in one way and the, the smoke comes out the other. Um, you're gonna need a soldering iron. This was nine quid from Tool Station. Um, and some two-part epoxy. I'll put a list down of all the bits I've used. I'll also put a video to where I found this. It was a helpful video on YouTube on how to make one of these. And then inside, you just use an old socks. So head into the uh, the washing basket of uh, single socks that have been there for a long, long time. Find yourself a nice cotton sock um, and then fill it about an inch from the bottom. So. Keep filling it until you've got about an inch worth of baby oil at the bottom. So just literally any baby oil, it's like a quid for a bottle. Um, and just keep soaking it because the sock or the piece of cotton will act as a wick. And then the baby oil is what produces the smoke. So then you've got your smoke. Um, then we have to move on in how we get it into the car. So that can be one of a few things I've used. Let me grab it quickly. So for um, putting your smoke into the car, you can use, like I said, whatever you want. Yogurt pots, things like that are great because they have a um, sort of dome, so you can sort of wedge them in and then just drill a hole and then you could just poke your, your silicon hose through it. Because it doesn't need to be 100% airtight, it just needs to kind of be enough. Um, or you can get someone to 3D print you one of these, which then bolts into the 80 mil, if you've got an 80 mil map, on a 225, if you've got a 180 at 70 mil, you can use something like a tin of beans or something like that and just drill a hole and then just poke this in um, because the smoke will naturally travel through. Um, if you're gonna do the valves, buy yourself a tire valve tool. You can actually buy it all included um, and that will just allow you to just take the valve out so then there's free flow. You don't have to build up any pressure or anything. And um, the valve just, just comes out like that. And then that just allows you to have a, a clear hole so that when the smoke goes through, you can literally just, it just blows straight through. Um, and that's it. And then literally just look for where the smoke's coming out. Um, one of the guys on Facebook, Danny, who actually lives just down the road from me, um, he used this to diagnose an air leak on his car, which was by the diverter valve. 
um, where it meets the charge pipe. But really simple little one. Um, pressure testing is all right because you can hear it, but sometimes you may not be able to see it. And if you can hear it by the time you've got to where you think it is, it's not there anymore. Well, as at least if you've got smoke whispering out of it, you'll be able to get a light. Oh, yep, yeah, there's the smoke, lovely jubbly. Um, but I mean, that is that is literally it, just a short, sweet video. Um, like I said, I'll put a link down to the description on exactly how to do it with the, um, the video that I followed and a list of all the bits I've used to do it. I reckon all in is probably 20 pound, but this will last you, well, a long time. Um, just don't overcook it like you don't need to use it and use it. Once you've started getting smoke, you can just knock your soldering iron off. Um, but it will keep producing smoke, it's great. I mean, you can use, um, if you've got something bigger like a small paint can, do it into a small paint can. The jar's a little bit easier because you've got the rubber seal on the, uh, the underside of the jar there, so it's got a rubber seal on it. Um, the tire valves, again, have a rubber seal, so you don't get too much smoke coming out from there. Um, and it's, it's just a little easier way of doing it. Um, plus, with the motorcycle ones, they've got a nut on the top, so you can make sure they're nice and tight. Baby oil's a quid. A uh, jar of pickles, buy yourself some salt beef, have some salt beef and pickles, and then at least you can enjoy your smoke machine before you, uh, <laughs> before you convert it. Um, you can use a bike pump if you want to keep it quiet, if you don't mind a bit of noise, if you've got like a plug-in cigarette lighter um, tire pump, that also works. But this is an absolutely savage tool for finding boost leaks because, I mean, you might not even know you have a boost leak. You might just think, oh, I'll have a little check, and then you'll find a little leak where you've got like a split on the back of a pipe, and unless you go like that, you won't find it. But, but if it's in situ... You're never going to know. It's great for testing your PCV system. If your brake pedal feels funny, you might have a split in one of the hard pipes. This is the tool for that. No pressure, so you can't get it wrong. Um, if you're using a little, a little pump like this or something like that, very little pressure is going in there. Um, it just allows the smoke to circulate. Um, but like I said, if you can't get a 3D printed one like this, try and get yourself something like a, a, yogurt, a large yogurt pot um, because they, they're obviously quite narrow at the bottom and then they get wider and you can literally just push that in to your um, air intake. So you wanna take your air box off or your air filter, take your MAF out, and then you have your turbo intake pipe, which is that rubber or silicon pipe. And then you can just wedge something in there, poke the bit of tube in, and you're smoke testing. Simple as that. Um, just a short, sweet video, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it, hope you find it helpful. Let me know if you've done something similar. You can buy a smoke tester if you don't wanna make yourself one, but they're about 150 quid. So for 15 or 20 pounds, if you've got a soldering iron already laying around, you could probably get one of these done for less than a fiver. Um, so I just wanted to show you how that works. And uh, let me know if it is helpful in the future, if you find any leaks, or if, you wanna, if you're local, you're more than welcome to pop and borrow this one. Um, and then uh, we'll see if you've got any leaks. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Bye for now.